Recently, I was reading up on some of OpenAI's latest models and innovations, and I came across an interesting piece of information regarding GPT-5, GPT-6, and even GPT-7. I believe we might be seeing OpenAI's own AI music generation product soon, and I think everyone should know about it, so today I'm going to go over some future timelines and what we may see in the future of the GPT models. But before I begin, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel as we strive to bring the latest and greatest from the world of AI. So I was going through the United States Patent and Trademark Office's main website to look at OpenAI's trademarks. The link to the website is publicly available for everyone to see, and I'll attach it to the description below as well. Upon entering the site, we can view the whole list of OpenAI's trademarks and images. We see trademark applications for ChatGPT, GPT, GPT-3, GPT-4, so on and so forth. But what I thought was very interesting was I saw applications for GPT-6 and GPT-7. GPT-5 isn't even out yet, but we already have GPT-6 and GPT-7 as well. And both trademarks were filed on October 20th of 2023. I just did a video on OpenAI's text-to-video Sora, and that trademark was just filed two weeks ago on February 14th, and that took everyone by storm, but I felt like GPT-6 and 7 went way below the radar. I actually didn't hear those models enough in any sort of AI discussion, but the point I want to make is that one of the new capabilities of GPT-6 is music generation. We are already seeing the ramifications of Sora, especially after Tyler Perry halted an $800 million studio expansion after the AI demonstration, so OpenAI's music generation impact could be just as profound as well in the music industry. Going into the trademark application details of GPT-6 and scrolling down, we can find a phrase, quote, downloadable computer software using artificial intelligence for music generation, unquote. I don't think the market has really been asking for this, but it is something that is growing in popularity and could definitely shock the entire nation and world when it does come out. If you think OpenAI doesn't even do music generation, they actually already do. In fact, they did this in 2020, guys, in 2020 with a model called Jukebox. At the time, OpenAI wasn't as viral or well-known as it is today, so many of us probably didn't even know about it. Now, Jukebox is a neural net that generates music, including rudimentary singing as raw audio in a variety of genres and artist styles. Jukebox produces a wide range of music and singing styles and generalizes to lyrics not seen during training. All the lyrics have been co-written by a language model and OpenAI researchers. Let's listen to one of the samples from OpenAI's website. This is pop in the style of Katy Perry. Oh. That's pretty fascinating, isn't it? It sounds pretty cool, and this could be too soon to call, but this may be a future feature of GPT-6. Looking at the trademark description of Sora, the features available for it are very accurate, and they were all present when OpenAI announced it. So what inspired Jukebox? Automatic music generation dates back to more than half a century. The traditional approach is to generate music symbolically in the form of a piano roll, which specifies the timing, pitch, velocity, and instrument of each note to be played. But symbolic generators have limitations. They cannot capture human voices or many of the more subtle timbres, dynamics, and expressivity that are essential to music. A different approach is to model music directly as raw audio. But generating music at the audio level is challenging since the sequences are very long. A typical four-minute song at CD quality has over 10 million time steps. So what Jukebox does to address the long input problem is to use an autoencoder that downsamples or compresses raw audio to a lower dimensional space by discarding some of the irrelevant bits of information. OpenAI can then train the model to generate audio in this compressed space and then upsample back to the raw audio space. To train the model, OpenAI crawled the web to curate a dataset of 1.2 million songs where more than half are in English, which are also paired with the corresponding lyrics and metadata from Lyric Wiki. The metadata includes artist, album genre, and year of the songs, along with the common moods or playlist keywords associated with each song. They trained on 32-bit, 44.1 kHz raw audio and perform data augmentation by randomly downmixing the right and left channels to produce mono audio. 
We won't go too technical with the features of Jukebox because I still want to go over the next big possible feature of GPT-6, but I just want to state a few limitations. While the generated songs show local musical coherence, follow traditional chord patterns, and can even feature impressive solos, we cannot hear familiar larger musical structures such as choruses that repeat. The downsampling and upsampling process introduces discernible blatant noise. Improving the back-end codes to capture more musical information would help reduce this. The models are also slow to sample from because of the auto-regressive nature of sampling. It takes approximately 9 hours to fully render one minute of audio through the models, and thus they cannot yet be used in interactive applications. And lastly, the model currently trains on English lyrics and mostly Western music, but in the future, OpenAI hopes to include songs from other languages and other parts of the world. Now, something we know is coming is AI agents, but it seems like OpenAI will delay that until GPT-6. Going back to the trademark, we can find a phrase of, quote, downloadable computer software for simulation environments for the purpose of testing artificial intelligence agents, unquote. What seems to be clear is that GPT-6 is going to have something where you can download a simulation for testing AI agents. It sounds vaguely worded, and there is just a ton of different things that we could essentially extrapolate from that information, but what we know is that AI agents are things that OpenAI are doing, because even recently there was an article that clearly states that OpenAI shifts its battleground to software that operates devices and automates tasks. Another thing I could envision OpenAI agents doing is, once they're downloaded, they can do things to streamline interacting with all the different apps on your computer, much like the Rabbit R1's intention with phones. I won't go over its entire functionality, but the point of the R1 is to implement a large action model, and the best way I can describe it is as a sort of universal controller for apps by using NLP. Normally, people will have to move the cursor, click and type to transfer between applications, but with these agents, all we need is our voice commands. Another type of AI agent OpenAI could develop are ones that handle web-based tasks, such as booking airfares or creating travel itineraries without access to APIs. ChatGPT currently can do agent-like tasks, but it has to use the relevant third parties' APIs. I could ramble on and on about how these agents could work, but we'll just let time tell. I'm interested to see what kind of security precautions, analytics, data collection, activity logs, and terms of use would be available for these agents because most of the apps, if not all, require a user to log in, accept terms and conditions, authorize an action, authenticate a login, etc., etc. But how would that register with all these AI agents in the back end? Would an agent only allow a certain user's voice to authorize an action much like Face ID only allows one person's face to unlock a phone? Someone can be under the influence and accidentally ask agents to purchase an item they wouldn't do when sober. How would the company supplying these agents tackle that problem? With the release of Rabbit R1, we will see how the market reacts with it as well as see the usage, feedback, pros and cons, and OpenAI will adapt their agents accordingly. Now, the crazy thing about this is that I would think that maybe we would get GPT-5 with agents, or maybe we could get a separate product, but it's clear from the trademark that it's potentially going to be delayed into GPT-6, which I'm not upset about. I'm just excited that this is probably how we're going to see how the OpenAI board intends to progress. But here's another caveat that I do just want to add. It's that anything could happen. Google, Apple, Microsoft, Meta, or a random company could have a major breakthrough and they could force OpenAI to drop some of their best models, so that is something we should keep on the lookout for. Subscribe to AI Symbiosis for more news in the world of AI. Have you seen OpenAI's brand new text-to-video AI model? It's called Sora, and it can generate videos up to a minute long while maintaining incredible visuals and adherence to users' prompts. Click on the video link popping up as we take you through a deep dive on this groundbreaking model. See ya!